now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 607. It's O'Connor and Company. We got a busy morning here at 635 Cal Thomas, 705. Mark Morgan used to keep the border secure back when we had a real president. 805 Tulsi Gabbard's got a new book. And then at 835, Representative Chip Roy, he was part of those Merrick Garland hearings yesterday. He's also going to have plenty to say about that executive order from Joe Biden yesterday. We're going to get to those details in a minute. It's Larry O'Connor with Julie Gunlock. And Julie, this is also one of those days where all the events of the world are important and everyone wants to be plugged in, but they also want to know what's going on literally right down the road from them as they sit in jammed traffic on the inner loop of the Beltway. Um, The delays are awful. Silver Spring, Georgia Avenue was a deadly crash that occurred overnight. Uh, It's been shut down as the investigation continues. And uh, you know we will have updates every 10 minutes on the fives with Jamie Witten. We will do it like clockwork so that you're up to speed on that. And then we're going to keep you informed while you're sitting there. And even better, if you haven't left yet, see if you can work from home. And uh, just keep it on WMAL the entire yeah. time. But <laughs> yeah. it's one of those days. I'm happy I'm not in the middle of it. You know, we, we, we often complain about the hours that we uh, that we keep and how early we have to drive in to do our job. But there's some advantage of not being part of the morning commute hours because yeah, this I, I would be losing it right now if I were stuck in this. Well, you just think of the people trying to get through their flights or trying to have important oh. meetings. I mean, they're... There are people who just can't simply work from home this morning. It's just, it's you have to endure this. It's tough. Absolutely it's tough. awful. Absolutely awful. All right. So uh, President Biden signed an executive order. We gave some details of it yesterday. The uh, Biden-Harris administration's actions to secure the border. And his post on X said, I would have preferred to address our issues at the border through bipartisan legislation because that's the only way to actually fix our broken system. But Republicans in Congress have left me no choice. Oh, the lies, the lies, the damnable lies. So today I'm announcing actions that bar migrants who cross our southern border unlawfully from receiving asylum unless they seek it after entering through established lawful processes. I mean, that's that's literally the bare minimum and frankly is a Band-Aid on, a, you know, the broken. But Hoover it's Dam. something. It's something, Larry. And he could have done this. It, it, with the you know the move of a pen whenever he wanted to he well, didn't have to wait until now correct but let me just say he caused this with the move of a pen yeah yeah <laughs> on he day did. one he yeah. terminated the construction of the border wall in fact we have the supplies to complete the wall sitting there you know getting rained on doing nothing he purposely stopped the process he uh, he eliminated the declaration of emergency on the border. He eliminated remain in Mexico. He re- eliminated all of the processes that were put in place when he came into office with the stroke of the pen. And a lot of people are pointing at this and saying, oh, you know, this is he said for months that he couldn't do anything. And now he's now he's doing something. Aha. See, it's a lie. No, no, no. Go back a little further. Yes, it started when he took 94 executive actions in his first 100 days to dismantle any semblance of order at the border. But then he spent three years denying that there was a crisis. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget the lies and the gaslighting saying, well, we have a completely orderly process at the border. This is not chaos. This isn't a crisis. No, we're solving the problem. We had chaos before under Trump. Now this is what we want. And in his announcement yesterday, Joe Biden mumbled through his prepared statements. I've come here today to do what the Republicans in Congress refuse to do. Take the necessary steps to secure our border. Yeah. The necessary steps to secure our border. I'm sorry, is Congress responsible for the border? Of course not. The executive branch is responsible for the border. And by the way, let's also, I mean, where to even begin with the lies that the media is letting this guy get away with? on a regular basis. Let's not forget going even before him denying there was a crisis on the border. Here he was when he was running for the nomination, trying to get votes from Democrats, answering a question from from Jorge Bonilla of Univision about the border. What Latinos should look at is comparing this president to the president we have is outrageous. Number one, we didn't lock people up in cages. We didn't separate families. We didn't do all of those things. Number one. Number two, 
Number two, by the time, this is the president who came along with the DACA program. No one had ever done that before. This is the president who sent a le legislation to the desk saying he wants to find a pathway for the 11 million undocumented in the United States of America. This is the president who's done a great deal. By the way, he's, he's of course, muddling things. He's talking about Obama. He's trying to compare Obama to Trump, all right? But uh, because of the way he's saying it, it's uh, he don't know who he's talking about. So I'm proud to have served with him. What I would do as president is several more things because things have changed. I would, in fact, make sure that there is we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. I would change the order that the president just changed, saying women who were being beaten and abused could no longer claim that. That is a reason for asylum. And by the way, retrospectively, you know, the 25th anniversary of the Violence Against Women Act is up. The Republican oh. Congress has not reauthorized it. Yeah, Violence Against Women. Anyway, oh. you hear him saying, we will immediately surge to the border. We will open up terms for asylum. We will let anybody in. That's not who we are, right? That, that was Biden when he was trying to get Democrat votes for the nomination. Th this goes all the way back. This is not just some new revelation that he's had, that he's doing something because Republicans have failed. This has always been his plan. And he telegraphed it. Well, and it's interesting. I mean, again, I think this is all about the election coming up. Obviously, we all know that. And when you look at there's this new Axios poll that says that the popularity among Latinos of building a wall or fence on the border jumped from 30 percent to 42 percent between December 2021 and March 2024. Showed that 64 percent of adult Latinos polled supported giving the president authority to shut down the U.S. border. He knows that he's losing. He's hemorrhaging black and Latino voters. He knows that they are really uncomfortable with his handling of the border. And so, again, this is just a political move for him to show that he's suddenly becoming uh, harder on the border, going to do something on the border so that he can appeal to these voters. It, again, And again, the we're averaging over 4,000 people illegally crossing to, a day. This new executive order allows the president to uh, completely shut down any border crossings if it reaches over 2,500 a day, which, by the way, is just under a million a year. Well, how about zero a day? Why Why do I? OK, so let me just be clear here. We have a law right now that says you can't illegally enter our country. And the president of the United States, under the guise of getting tough on crime and tough on the border, signed an executive order yesterday that allows him to shut down the border if over twenty five hundred people break the law every day. How about zero? How about zero? We got zero tolerance on everything in this country, but we can't have zero tolerance on people illegally crossing the border. Bill Malusian for Fox News covers the border on a daily basis. He's got a great analysis of what this uh, executive order does and, more importantly, what it doesn't do and what they're lying to you about. We're going to break that down for you in a moment. We've got Mark Morgan coming up. We've got Chip Roy coming up. We're going to get to all of that so you're informed and you know exactly what's going on because the mainstream media – they're not giving you news. They're giving you propaganda. Over here, we give you news, and we help you make sense of the news as well, as you know. So we'll continue in that vein in a moment. First, though, very busy day on the Beltway and on your morning commute at 6.15. WMAL traffic and weather every 10 minutes. First on the fives, Jamie Witten's in the... Weeknights with Mark Levin, 6 to 9 p.m. On News Talk 105.9 WMAL, making sense of the news. I've come here today to do what the Republicans in Congress refuse to do take the necessary steps to secure our border. God, he just, he cannot he barely understand what he's saying. Um, but he's finger pointing, he's blaming. He, he literally created this crisis. Yep. Everybody knows it. And, and by the way, I want to reiterate what I said yesterday. If in fact he does, which I don't even think he will, but if he does shut down entry at any of our ports of entry and it forces people to stay on the other side of the border, you realize, of course, that since he hasn't negotiated a remain in Mexico policy, since he hasn't worked with the Mexican <laughs> government because he destroyed right. that, he's actually creating another humanitarian crisis. Exactly. And, and despite public perception, well, we, we actually do care about that. These people have been promised. They, they've been sold a bill of goods. They've said, come here and we'll let you in. That's what Biden's position has been up until yesterday afternoon. So they've paid ten thousand dollars to human tra smugglers and sex traffickers and drug smugglers to get yep. across the border. They're going to get here. They're going to be turned away. They're going to be stuck. They're going to be living in squalor on the other side of the border. And Mexico is going to have to deal with them now. This is another nightmare that Joe Biden is created for his own lamentable political future. Not only has he created 
a humanitarian crisis sort of on the border of people in limbo, not not knowing where they're going to, you know, this is it. We're going to see the sort of drone footage of people under a bridge again, right, in, the, in this squalor and mess. But unaccompanied children and minors are exempt from this order. Um, so they yeah. are telling he they've just conveyed to the cartels the way in which you get these people over is That's you right. Use kids. put an adult with a kid and That's they go right. over the border and I mean this is the way to create a child trafficking network and That's they're right. doing it and they're going to have the help of all of these charities out there and these cartels are going to take advantage of this yeah. it's absolutely sickening you want to get into America without having to stand in line and doing it the legal way Bring a abuse, kid with you. abuse children. And that's your ticket in. Uh, According to the White House, they will bar migrants who cross the southern border unlawfully from receiving asylum. They should have been doing that from day one. That's and again, you didn't need Republicans in Congress because that's already the law. You just chose not to enforce the law. Number two, you need literally there was no new legislation needed for that. Number two, strengthening the asylum screening process. Well, okay, that that sort of admits that we had a problem with our asylum screening process, which they've been denying up until now, right? Uh, Next, new docket to address cases and make decisions within six months versus six years. He said he was going to do that before he became president. Remember, he said, oh, we're going to, again, the whole surge to the border, which is a stupid word to use. We'll surge to the border. New judges so we can process people quickly. What took you so freaking long? Revoke visas of CEOs and government officials who profit from the exploitation of vulnerable migrants. That is an admission that people have been exploited by individuals. They've denied that up until now. Expanding efforts to dismantle human smuggling and support immigration prosecutions. Why not do that on day one? And by the way, a good way to keep people from being human smuggled is to not allow them across the border in the first place. No reason to smuggle anyone. If you enforce the laws. Oh, and I love the last one. Seizing fentanyl at our border. Why haven't you been seizing fentanyl at the border? Right. And why right. do you and again you don't need Republicans in Congress to actually enforce drug smuggling laws. Those right. laws are already there. We need a new law to keep people from crossing the border with fentanyl. Otherwise we got our hands are tied, there's nothing we can do. Uh Mr. President, there are actually laws in place right now. This you is don't a need a new with law. This is a pattern with Democrats. There's a problem. They have a new law. They don't enforce the law that already exists. Right. It's a pattern. Bill Malusian, as I mentioned, Bill Malusian covers the border. He says, uh, let me just read this real fast. In no way can Biden's executive order be described as shutting down the border. It bans asylum to some illegal crossers, but with some exceptions. It does not stop or slow the up to 1,500 immigrants per day released into the U.S. via Border Patrol One app at ports of entry. It does not. They, they're using an app right now to sort of just stream through the process. It's like it's like being on preach or what's the uh, clear? They're like they got the clear aisle there, like okay. a TSA. Yeah. Does not stop or slow the up to 30,000 illegal immigrants per month flying directly into the U.S. That's that's right. By the way, this has nothing to do with people who fly in and then claim asylum and get caught in because they are not caught on camera. This is all about the photo op. Right. Um, Unaccompanied children, minors are exempt, as you already pointed out, Julie, which emboldens child trafficking. Asylum has already been banned for most illegal immigrants who cross illegally since the end of Title 42 last year. Remember that whole thing? And that hasn't stopped them from coming. The highest numbers in recorded history were at the end of 2023. The order may speed up removals to countries we can deport easily to, like Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries, but there's been no explanation as to how the administration will be able to begin mass removal of illegal immigrants coming from another hemisphere with governments that don't cooperate with the U.S., like China, where we've seen huge numbers of people in the California southern border. So so this is nothing. It's I, I've been calling it a Band-Aid on the Hoover Dam. It's not even that. It's not even that. And it was all for show. And you didn't hear any criticism or any critical analysis on mainstream media. They're just they're taking his talking points and his propaganda because that's what they do. Yes. Thankfully, though, all of you all, all y'all, all y'all are smarter than that. And you know that this is nothing and it's not going to help him. And, and all, all he wanted to do was be able to stand up there with a big poster behind him and the American flag and slur his way through another damnable lie about Republicans. I've come here today to do what the Republicans in Congress refuse to do. Take the necessary steps to secure our border. Did you did you understand half of those words, by the way? No, I didn't. Mashed potato brains. Yeah. 
coming up, we, we, I, I get, it. <laughs> I'm so, so angry about this. Uh, coming up, we have Mark Morgan at 705, who actually had a secure border when he ran things there at Homeland Security. And we also have Congressman Chip Roy of Texas joining us at 835. Right now, it's 623. Now, now. on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 637 now on this very busy Wednesday morning, and it's even busier beyond just the regular news cycle that we're coping with by drinking water out of a fire hose. But also you've got the inner loop, a a complete chaos in Montgomery County because of this overnight accident and police investigation. We're going to keep you updated on that every 10 minutes on the fives with Jamie Witten. Also at 705, Mark Morgan, who under his watch, we actually had a secure border. We'll comment on yesterday's executive action. 805, Tulsi Gabbard has a new book. We'll find out what that's about. And then at 835, Representative Chip Roy of Texas, uh, not just about the border, but also about that hearing of Attorney General Merrick Garland yesterday. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Good morning. Cal Thomas joins us. And Cal, uh, I think it's fair to say over your your years covering Washington, D.C. at the highest possible levels of the federal government, you have seen your share of cynical political moves But yesterday's announcement from Joe Biden securing our border because Republicans refuse to do so has got to take the cake. It does. It takes the cake. It takes the donuts. It takes just about anything else. Every baked eat. goods you can think of. <laughs> That's right. I mean, here's a guy who for three and a half years says, I don't have the power. Now, he had the power to do away with all of Trump's executive orders, but suddenly he lost the power like he was hanging out with kryptonite or something <laughs> and uh, lo- lost all the power to uh, to uh, enforce the laws already passed by Congress didn't have the power to use executive orders, and then somebody told him, because clearly he was taking a nap at the time, uh, that uh, you do have the power to issue executive orders. So that's fine, and the executive orders he issues are something like applying a Band-Aid to somebody who has just cut his artery open. It yeah. does nothing. I thought uh, Speaker uh, Mike Johnson had a good uh, Uh, response to this. He said, the executive action does nothing to end parole abuses or catch and release. It continues the administration's abuse of the CBP-1 app, does not uh, re-implement Trump's successful Remain in Mexico policy, and on and on and on. They got a 2,500 cap. What are they going to have, a border patrol agent there? Say, there's one, they got one of those little clicking things, you know, they click one, there's two, 29, 2,500, that's it, okay, no more, no more. Do you right, think they're going right. to stop? They're not going to stop. No. It's crazy. Yep. So Cal, will this work on the American public, though? We know that the mainstream media is all going to go in on this, oh, you know, Biden's really doing this. He's doing this because the Republicans failed to act. We know this message. Yeah. Is this going to work on the Amer- American public? I mean, this is gaslighting at its finest. Do yes, you think right, the Julie. American public will believe this? No, I don't think so, Julie. I think people, uh, the issue is already fixed in their minds. You look at the polls, uh, immigration has been up there at the top and uh, far above uh, many other issues uh, for months. And people are really concerned about it. There, there's a form of censorship going on. You're right. You look at the papers this morning. Washington Times says it on the front page. Very well done. Uh, the Washington Post, at least on the electronic version, I see there's not the story's not there at all. It's buried, of course. That's why they're losing seventy million dollars. Uh, they don't report the news. They just report their opinion. Uh, so uh, same with the New York Times. They're all the same. So all the media is big on it. But the people get it. They can see the pictures. They understand what's going on. Uh, they understand that these are people getting cheap labor jobs they're 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 uh, coming into the country illegally from all over the world and let's not forget the two promises that Barack Obama and Joe Biden have kept more than any other and and Biden recently repeated it we're going to fundamentally transform America well i want to know from what to what <laughs> uh, there are people in this we're doing pretty fine i think uh, in the old america uh, you got your uh, you got your d day america you got those family values america and they look pretty good to me yeah we had some problems but we uh, we were moving forward of this course. moves us backward yeah no one needs fundamental transformation in this country no. in any way whatsoever cal thomas is our guest indicated columnist and uh, you know after several years we finally had some tough questions focused at anthony fauci 
with regard to some of the horrible decisions that were made, not based on science, that we're now finding out later, uh, like social distancing, like masking, like the vaccine mandate. They sort of made it up as they went along. But, of course, the way they treated people who objected and challenged and questioned whether it was the right thing to do was atrocious. Were you satisfied by uh, how this hearing went? And do you think this is where it ends, Cal? No, I and no, and no. I think uh, you know. If you think back, and uh, at first they told us uh, you don't need masks. Then they said you do need masks. Uh, then they said uh, vaccinations would uh, absolutely keep you from getting uh, the virus. Then it, it, it didn't. Uh, I I got my three vaccinations, my two regular and my booster, and I uh, I got uh, the symptoms anyway. I didn't get a bad case of it, and it went away because I t- took this other stuff, this Paxlovid. But the the real problem was I think the public would have uh, had more credibility in these statements if they didn't make each one of them uh, sound like fact. Yes, we are. I am science. We. This is absolutely the way you should go. And then a week later, contradict what you just said. Uh, the CDC, I think, uh, has ruined in its credibility. I think the NIH has got a lot of credibility to reclaim. If they would just say, look, folks, we're all in this together. We're working along. We're doing as best we can. Uh, we're, we're doing what the science tells us today yeah. have patience with us but, but they didn't do that no they turned it all they turned public health policy into a political weapon and uh, cal i i don't know how we're used to on this i don't think any of it would have happened at the level and degree that it did if it weren't a presidential election year i think they tried to 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 make people miserable they tried to scare them and tried to instill in them this idea that donald trump was uh irresponsible and uh, can't be trusted with a major crisis like this and and they i think they did it on purpose a lot of it was done on purpose to sow these seeds of fear well i think if you just uh tuned out of the media in an election year with the exception of wmal and my column of course then you'd be a whole lot you'd be a whole lot better amen off. to that Amen to that. It's just, it's just, spun, it's spun. It's like North Korea. It's like China. You know, they, 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 they twist the news. It's not even news anymore. And the people who, who uh, supposedly are journalists are just uh, flax uh, for a particular point of view. Yeah. They're almost no journalists anymore. It's very sad. Cal Thomas is still one of them, and he still cranks out that column every week. We'll look forward to tomorrow's. Cal, thank you thank so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks, you may think that the Biden administration and their allies in Fulton County and Manhattan utilizing the justice system to be be weaponized and harm their political opponent, Donald Trump. You may think that that is a deteriorating, uh, horrific uh, 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 turn of events in American history, that this is going to, you know, undermine our judicial process, it's going to undermine our nation's standing in the world. And it's a a line that should have never been crossed in American politics. You may think that, but if you do, if you connect the dots between Merrick Garland's number three leaving the Justice Department to go take a job as a subordinate DA in Manhattan and then lead the charge against Donald Trump in that courtroom and prosecute him, if you think that that's a direct connection to the Biden administration and communications going on between the White House and Fannie Willis down in Fulton County. If you connect all those dots and see that this is the Biden administration and Democrats using lawfare to attack a political opponent like in a banana republic, if you think that, Merrick Garland thinks that you are a dangerous conspiracy theorist, and he said so yesterday during his opening statement on Capitol Hill. Uh, Congressman Matt Gates of Florida then responded with what I thought was a, a rather reasonable request from the attorney general to sort of, OK, you think this is a conspiracy. Why don't you help clear things up then? Attorney General, you've told us that it's a dangerous conspiracy theory to allege that the Department of Justice is communicating with these state and local prosecutions against Trump, you can clear it all up for us right now. Will the Department of Justice provide to the committee all documents, all correspondence between the department and Alvin Bragg's office and Fonnie Willis's office and Letitia James's office? The offices you're referring to are independent offices of state. I get of, that. I get that. State. The question is whether or not you will provide all of your documents and correspondence. That's the question. It's, I, I don't need a, a history lesson. Well, I'm going to say again, we do not control those offices. They make yeah, their the own decisions. The question is whether decisions. you communicate with them, not whether you control them. Do you communicate with them and will you provide those communications? You make a request. We'll refer it to our Office of Legislative but, but Affairs. But see, here's the thing. They you come in here and you lodge this attack that it's a conspiracy theory that there is coordinated lawfare against Trump. And then when we say, fine, just give us the documents, 
give us the correspondence, and then if it's a conspiracy theory, that will be evident. But when you say, well, we'll take your request, and then we'll, we'll sort of work it through the DOJ's accommodation process, then you're actually advancing the very dangerous <laughs> conspiracy theory that you're concerned about. Thank you. And uh, th by the way, this one, hundred percent. Uh, and this went on for about five minutes, and and Garland never acquiesced. By the way, of course, he also was asked some pointed questions about any communications that may have occurred, and um, and oh, my favorite part, he was asked hypothetical questions. Matt Gates had some great moments where he said, "Hey, hypothetically, when you were a judge, were you allowed to make political contributions?" No, I was not. Uh, but I know you're referring to the judge in Manhattan, and that's a different jurisdiction. And Matt Gaetz says, no, no, actually, I'm, I'm, you're connecting those dots, sir. Let me ask you this. What about a family member profiting from <laughs> one of the defendants that you're ruling a case over? You know, like, and again, oh, I'm not going to comment on that case. And he just has it all sides to Sunday, Julie, because he comes out and makes the statement that you're all conspiracy theorists if you think there's a connection. And then when asked... Not even specific questions about the case, but larger ethical questions about a judge's role. He said he has it both ways. He says, I'm not going to comment on that. Well, sir, you just commented on it you when did. you called us all conspiracy theorists. Right. You've already commented on it, and now you won't actually address the issues at hand. This man is a nightmare. Again, you say what you will about Mitch McConnell, but he single-handedly keeping that, that Supreme Court nomination from ever getting to a committee oh, during 2016 the greatest achievement of mitch mcconnell's career because this man on the supreme court would have been a nightmare for our country yeah matt gates really does deserve some credit here for exposing oh, exactly yeah. what you just laid out larry oh, yeah. um it, it, you know too often uh members let them get away with these kinds of these kinds of uh, answers to these questions. And Matt Gates really hammered home. You create, you say that we are forwarding a conspiracy theory, and then you won't give us the information to debunk it. So I, I was really impressed with Matt Gates at that hearing. That's right. Uh, Chip Roy had some great moments as well. He's going to join us at eight thirty-five. We'll talk about it right now at six fifty-three.